Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to grow or build a friendship with your spouse. Yeah, keep watching. Shoot day is happening at Canary Hotel, and Canary Hotel has some amazing offers for you. Every Sunday, Canary Hotel has something called Paint and Chill. Now, Paint and Chill happens every Sunday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Adults pay 70,000 and children pay 50,000. Now, these are activities that you can do with your spouse mm, to create that bonding moment. Please try them out. And this includes a welcome drink, all art materials and tools. You can take the masterpiece home and it comes with games and karaoke as well. Now that's a way to spend time with your family. Try out Canary Hotel today. It's located on Chira Road. You won't regret it. So I did a question tag on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, why why <laughs> please check out lisa kosima on instagram i did um, a q a asking people to just send in questions and i will answer them and one of them that came through was someone asking about how they can grow a relationship with their spouse now i wanted to add this to the whole q a video but then i realized i had so much to say about this i decided to make it a video on its own so i love that she says how do you grow because that means there is a hint of friendship yeah and i think that's very key when you're choosing a partner you need to choose someone who is your friend because friendship is it's like one of the most important things um for a healthy marriage because you need to be friends so i'm imagining there's a hint of friendship and we just want to grow and make this friendship even yeah better and the first thing i would say is you need to be genuinely interested in each other now i remember when uh, Steve and I were dating, we would talk. Let me tell you guys, you really are interested in knowing how this person is feeling, how their day was, like you genuinely want to know and vice versa. And I think the challenge comes in marriage where we become complacent and we're going about our mundane tasks, etc. And then this person stops being like that important to us. So someone comes in, maybe from work, and hello, hello, how was the day? Ah, oh, good, good. And that's it. You don't want to know more. You're not bothered, yeah, because of everything that we are going through. We are tired, we are stressed. So I think continue to be genuinely interested in each other. And I think we had a conversation about this at Mom's Gala. Flavia Tumsimi was asking us, if your husband comes in and you say you're carrying a child, etc., what happens? Do you just, oh, hi, and then go about your day, you know? Or do you put things aside and then show this person that he is important or she is important, you know, and things like that. So be genuinely interested in knowing about this person. Talk, talk, talk. And I think that comes to my point number two, yeah? There's something about conversation that just brings people together. Hmm? When I talk to Steve, sometimes I talk so much, I talk and I feel like ah, there's no better feeling because you feel like someone has had you. So when you talk, you get to share concerns, fears, and you know, funny things, interesting stories. And I always ask people when something good or something bad happens to you throughout the day, who is the, first, the person you call first? Who is that person you, that comes to mind? And for me, it's always Steve, oh my God. I've just been hit by a car. Or, oh my God, ah, I've got this amount of money. I've got a new gig. You know, those exciting things. So you want to keep that fire burning by being genuinely interested, but then have all those conversations, you know. So try and practice it. And sometimes you may even need to put reminders on your phone of check on your husband. And all these things, by the way, I'm also speaking for myself, yeah. Steve and I are friends, but let me tell you, you go through marriage sometimes and then you, it's just... You go into routine, day in, day out, you're doing the same things, and sometimes you forget to build that connection together, yeah? So having conversations is key. And also I realize sometimes you're sitting together, you're like, oh, what do we talk about? The jazz is finished, yeah? Um, there are so many conversation starters, there are so many games online, and so many uh, people have developed cards. I think you can check out Can We Talk on Instagram. They have lots of conversation starters that help you just ask those questions. 
either in the past, present, but also future, so that you get to know what what are these what's this person's fears? What are they thinking about the future? What are their dreams? So many of us are with spouses, but we don't know their dreams, their actual dreams. What would they, you know, do if they got one million dollars? You know those interesting questions. So just look them up and have conversation. Yeah, that's tip number two. The third thing that I think will really help us in building that friendship is putting distractions away. So many times in marriage. We are together, but not together, if you know what I mean. Like, many of us are on our phones, many of us are working all the time, we have children distracting us, we have movies distracting us, like, there's a lot going on. And then you get to realize that you and your spouse have not had an actual conversation because life is lifing. So it's just a reminder to just put distractions aside and just be there. Even if you're just there looking at each other, it's better because... You begin to think, okay, what can I ask? What can we talk about? You know, then things will come to mind. But if you never leave that room for boredom, the same way we tell children, allow them to be bored because they get creative. Even you guys, allow yourselves to be bored because in there, you begin to, you know, discover things, see your spouse in a new light and things like that. So put distractions away. Even the babies can be distractions. Put them away. I also realized sometimes doing Good things at the wrong time can be a distraction. <laughs> uh, because there are so many activities, it may be church activities, you're always in church, you're always doing this, you're always at work. Like they are good things, but if done at the wrong time and if you do not prioritize time together with your spouse, then they can be bad things. Yeah. So please put distractions aside. The other point I wanted to also put across is kind of being consistent. And consistency, we talk about consistency in all spheres of life, but consistent with the love that you have for your spouse. Do you love your spouse even when things are not going well? Or our love is conditional, like your spouse is your friend when he's giving you kameza money, or when he's taking you out, when he has bought you gifts and flowers. Do you show that you love him even when things are going bad, when he has lost that job, when he has lost that money, when he's in, he's in debt, when he has angered you, like, do you still show that you're still my person regardless, you know? And I think we all love to be loved. Like, think about normal friendship, yeah? You want friends who are going to love you in the good and bad times, yeah? And I think it's the same for our spouses. If he has hurt you, do you still show that you're my person even when you've hurt me? And I think that grows over time and that person begins to trust and believe that you are in their corner. So I think it's just a reminder for us, be consistent with your love, with your loyalty to your spouse, and the friendship will definitely thrive. Light bulb moment, Lisa. Did you know that a group of pandas is called an embarrassment? That's how some of you are. When you're in a group of your friends, you change. You indeed become an embarrassment. So you need to step out and find a new clique today. <laughs> the other thing that can help is participating in each other's hobbies. Now, I know we all can be different sometimes, but there should be hobbies where you do together. Steve loves football. I'm not interested at all. One, because I'm very competitive, so if I support a team and then they are losing all the time, like Arsenal, he's supporting Arsenal, and sometimes, okay, this season has been good. Oh, Thank God it ended, right? I think it ended. But they played better than they ever did in the past. So for me, I get so competitive and I get so angry. I'm like, you know what? I can't deal. But then you need to realize that this is what your spouse likes. And when you just sit with them and enjoy it with them, then you will have conversation about it. Yeah. So don't be selfish. I know many times we want to do what we want to do. You know, so think about the other spouse. What do they like to do? Watch out much with them. Um, do those things that they like, and vice versa, yeah? I know so many guys were like, oh, what they call this? Soaps. Oh, if your spouse loves soaps, even you just sit, go there, and just listen, be like, wow, this confusion is serious. But then, your person will appreciate that you've come into their space as well to spend time together. So don't only think about the things you like to do. Um, and that brings me to the other thing also, in participating in each other's of hobbies, of course, going on date nights, I think that's really key. You know, that continuous pursuit of each other is something that works in marriage. Now, 
we've tried to do date nights. We say, okay, let every two weeks, Kali, minimum, you know. And recently, we Steve sent me a list of restaurants, like, okay, where should we go? I'm like, mm, I chose one I had not gone to before because I hate repetition. <laughs> I always want something new. So we went to this place and then there was an advert that they had like barbecue night. Now Steve loves meat, so I'm tapping into that as well. Somehow I'm tending to love meat a lot. And you know how those ads be? Like that she, meat was juicy on the grill. It looked nice. We're like, Mwah, let's go for this one. So we went and it was going to be I think having bad night or something. Now me, I'm not interested in bad night or all these things, but I'm like, mm, that barbecue, I know still will laugh, so let's just go. So you see the element of compromising for the other person. So we go for this bad night with barbecue. <laughs> huh? Oh my God, let me tell you. First of all, there was no barbecue. Like it was just chicken on the side of the buffet. We were so mad. We were like, really? And then the band started to play. It was horrible. I was like, why would a place like this hire a band like this? It was not nice. The guy's vocals were funny. So me and Steve just, we didn't enjoy the band, but we enjoyed laughing about it, you know? We laughed about it. We kept giving ourselves side eye. We're like, hey, what's happening? You know, that whole conversation. And we went talking about it at home up to now, you know? We laugh about those things. So you get those inside jokes that only you and your partner know about. And it becomes interesting when you can look at each other and each of you knows what you guys are talking about. You're like, that guy is what's happening. Like, you know what's happening. So it's really, really nice to go out. Sometimes the date nights may not be <laughs> fun, like you had um, planned, but then you will talk about them. So we're like, oh, now we know what, where not to come. <laughs> so it's just interesting. And when it comes to date nights as well, I know date nights sometimes can be like, Again, are we just going to eat food? But kind of plan out your date nights and change them up. For example, you can have a date night for just checking out a restaurant. This date night is just checking out new food and eating by just experimenting. The next date night can be about money conversations. Like uh, we call them money dates. Have a money date. Talk about your plans financially. What's the plan you get? The next uh, date can be about, uh, can be maybe a double date with another couple. The next date night can be a walk. The next date night can be a place which is just secluded and it's just you two where you can have those intimate discussions and do a marriage health check and, you know, and things like that. The other one could be a movie. So you keep changing it up so it's not boring and every time you go into a restaurant and just sitting and eating and then you come back and you've not talked, you know, because there are so many people around you so you can't even have those deep conversations. Keep the date nights, you know, changing changing change them up and plan for them i think that builds relationship with your spouse friendship and yeah it builds those memories that you will never forget the other thing that um, can help you grow your friendship is understanding who your partner is and i think let me tell you that's a game changer and i know we talk about temperaments a lot love languages it is but you know as you go into marriage you forget these things like daily eh? like you're just going about life you actually forget why is he acting like this and it goes back to temperament to just understanding your person um immediately steve comes i know he wants a cup of tea so don't wait mm? you know your person and vice versa you know when lisa's birthday is coming she wants something grand like keep on your toes like keep learning this person every day because we keep changing and will not be the same so if you do not um Keep figuring out who is this person, has he changed, what does he like, what does, does she like anymore. Then you will you'll be cramming and the things will not be appealing to me anymore. I'll be like, but does my friend know me, you know, and things like that. So if you don't do that, you'll say this person doesn't care about me. Kumbi, you've just not understood who this person is. I know that Steve sometimes loves, that he loves the outdoors so much. So sometimes he just wants to be alone, taking his tea uh, <laughs> outside alone, you know understand this person and get to know how you can uh, fill their love tank um, when you know them well. So just keep learning about one another. Then one of my final points I think is forgive. When you're holding grudges and when you're holding onto bitterness, maybe your spouse hurt you years ago, months ago, you will not open up to be the kind of friend that you need to be. So 
talk through those things. Don't throw things under the rug. Talk through them and forgive one another. And I think women, we struggle with this a lot because we are always... I remember, how come last month? How come last week? Uh, you know, that kind of closes someone up because when they realize you're tracking their wrongs, then obviously they're not going to be the kind of person and friend that you need to be. So have those conversations, talk through those things, communicate and get help. And I know there are some people who married uh, these people and they were not really friends and it's already hard. Either maybe the person was too old, so maybe they look at you as a young girl and they don't want anything to do with you. Like you can't even tickle each other because this is like... <laughs> Like, play those book games, stick on one another, etc. But if that's a challenge, I think seek counsel. Um, have conversations with other people who can support you on the journey. I keep emphasizing marriage cannot be done alone. So when men see other men treating their wives a certain way, being lovey-dovey, you know, they'll, they'll pick up on those sing signals and be like, hmm, maybe, yeah, let me try that. So... Please be in spaces where people have a similar value system and you can do life together and hold each other accountable. I really hope this has been helpful. Let us know in the comment section some other tips that can help build that bond and friendship with your spouse. My name is Lisa Kusima. As always, I'm here to inspire.